So in the last video, I created a simple app and we looked at the URL mapping to the view functions and the basic data flow in Flask. In this video, we're going to follow from that and we're going to see how the templating engine works in Flask. So what is a templating engine anyway and why do we need it? Templates are responsible for displaying the data to the end user. So these are the web pages that come back when you send a query to a web server. This is how it's presented back to you. It helps create dynamic content or content on the fly. Not many web applications or web servers are static at this point. Most of them are really front end for applications that need to generate HTML pages on the fly and process data and present that in HTML format. So this is the requirement in today. In addition to presenting nice, clean HTML pages, templating engines are also required to be fast and responsive. The templating engine used in Flask is called Jinja. It's a Python library. It's fast, it's powerful, and it accomplishes all of the above and much more. Before we jump into Jinja and to see how that works, I just want to give you a little bit of context here. The architecture of Flask is such that there are three distinct components, and this is very similar to all web platforms out there. So the three components are the view, the model, and the template. The view we just discussed in the last video, which looks at the URL mapping and how the view function executes based on what URL comes into the server. So the view processes the incoming requests, basically, and delegates to whatever needs to address it. The model is the database. The Flask does not come with its own database. We're not going to use a database either. We'll use a JSON file, but normally you would have an interface here to something like MySQL or Oracle, um, but that doesn't come out of the box, but it can be easily added to Flask for database access. And the final uh, module or component is the templating engine, and that's what we're going to discuss here in this video. And that presents the output of the web server to the user. This, this, this is the web page that you see when you log in or we send a request to a server. The reason for dividing up these components is A, to make web development less complex, and these are different schools, and they're different people do these jobs. Um, the people that write code for the view functions are different than the database administrators are the people that write pretty HTML forms for the output. So it's better to keep all of these people separate. We don't want them all working together. And this is the design that's been around for a while. So that's what we're doing here. So Flask comes out of the box with two of the components, the view function, obviously, and the um, templating engine, which is Jinja. The model does not come out of the box. That has to be added later. We won't be doing that in our course, but that's why we're tackling the templating engine right now to um, make sure that we can present web forms for whatever code we write to the user. So it's an important part of the web development. So that's a quick overview of the uh, architectural design and it will probably help you make a little bit of sense of what we're doing here. So in our specific example, we're going to change up a little bit. The last time we sent a web form, we sent data in a web form to the server and the server responded back with a text file saying, welcome to Flask. This time we're going to use a template instead for the text file. So the front end will be the same, but instead of just returning a text in the view function, we're going to actually send a web page. So it's probably easier at this point to just don't jump in and do it rather than and talk about it anymore. So we're going to make some tweaks to our code here. Um, but first, we'll create two directories, one called static and the other templates. The static folder is for static content such as JPEGs, CSS or JavaScript. And we'll deal with that later in the course. But for now, we're going to focus on the next folder, which is templates. That's lowercase with an S. And in this folder, we're going to create a HTML file called welcome.html. It's a very simple. Most of it is the stub that when I created the file, I just put H2 header to line in here. I aligned it to the center and called it welcome to templates. So it's very similar 
to what we did the last time. So this file will be saved in the templates folder. Next, we're going to go back to our code, our hash app, or whatever you called it. And we'll change the view function from the string that we had the last time and use the render template function. That needs to be imported on the top as well. And the render template function will take the welcome.html that we created a minute ago and render that to the users. So right now it's just basically returning an HTML file that we created, but in the future we'll see how we'll add variables, Jinja variables to these files, and that'll all be rendered together as one web page. Okay, so we're ready to launch now, and we click on our link, and it brings up the web page that we created. So this is nothing spectacular, but it's just using the render template versus what we did the last time with the string. And it's not important now, but obviously will be going forward. So next up, we're going to create two more HTML files, a form HTML, which will hold a form for the user to enter in their name, and an output HTML, which once the user enters their name, submits it to the server and processed by the server, the output will go to the output.html. So in the form template, it's nothing complex. It's really just a basic HTML form. I aligned it in the center as well. And the input type, I gave it a variable of F name for first name and L name for last name. The only thing really interesting is the method equal to post. So HTML has two common functions to access a web server. It's get and post. Get pulls it and it's more suitable for read-only data because the get parameters are typically in the URL and that's not very secure. But for read-only, it's fine. Post is more secure because the URL does not change and it posts it in a form to the web server. There are other HTML methods, but these are two very common and you should know the difference. So in this case, we're using post because we're sending data to the server. We're not just requesting a readout. So we're sending the, the person's name and we're doing that via the submit button at the bottom. And again, this is just part of a standard HTML. Moving along to the output HTML, it's the stub with one line, a header one, and it was aligned at center again. And the registration has been completed as just standard text. And then we have the two ginger variables. So the ginger variables are noted in, in these curly braces, two of them, exactly like this. And ginger can do a lot more than just put variables in a web form, but this is an example of how it works. So we're going to send the first name and last name that we receive from the form. We're going to send it to this output and I'll show you how to do that in the back end in our hash app. So back at hashapp.py we add another view function. This time it'll be slash form. So when the users type form into the URL, this will be uh, processed. So we have to add another function to the top. It's the request function. That's how we get the variables from the web form into Flask. So if request method equal to post, meaning that if there's be, if someone has clicked the submit button, then we'll process this. If not, we'll just have the standard page, as you can see on the bottom, it'll just render the form template again. So if the method is equal to post, the next thing is that we'll capture the variables that the user put into the form, the first name and the last name, and then we'll return the output HTML with the two variables F name and L name. So an important thing to note is on the app route, the methods equal to get and post. So post is important here um, to align with the form on the forms.html. So this is a can cause a subtle error and it might throw you off. So just be sure that post is in the methods for this um, view function. So I'm going to split the screen here just to show you the relationship between these two variables. So in the return re uh, render template, you have the F name and L name. And over on the right, you see the output web page and you see the two variables that align with that on the output page. So we're sending those two variables to the output.html. Now here's our web page again, but if we put the slash form in the URL, that'll go to the form view function and present us with the 
HTML web form looking for our first name and last name. So we can type anything in here, but we'll just type, I'll just type John Doe just for consistency with the uh, slides. And when we hit submit, it'll send it back to the server and add the variables and send them out to the output. And this is the output form here. And you see that the registration has been completed and then it put the two variables in. Just to be master of the obvious, there is no registration process. I just did this to show the flow from the input form on the forms HTML page through the backend server where it's processed and the ginger variables are inserted and then to the output page is what you see here. So it's just to understand the flow. And once you understand this flow, the rest of it then is just standard Python coding and using whatever function you, you're using to do whatever you need to do. There's one other area that would need to be addressed at some point, and that's the database section or the model of Flask, but we'll, we'll address that when we get to it. We're not actually going to connect to a database for this app. We'll use something called a JSON file. But that'll come, more will come later. A recap, we have uh, looked at the Flask template engine. We've created a new view function and we created some HTML forms and inserted some Jinja variables into those forms to render it back to the user. So next we'll look at another Flask library called WT Forms. And WT Forms is a form library that does something similar to the web forms, but it's way more robust, more secure, does verifications, you can upload files, and this will take us to the next stage of our app where we can actually get some real interaction with the user.